Hello everyone and welcome to day two of our five day challenge of getting to know our watercolor supplies. Today's video is all about paintbrushes and getting to know the different options, shapes, sizes, and general information. I'm not going to be discussing uh, specifics about any brand in particular, but I am going to be focusing on what the different type of paintbrush is and the shapes and things that you can do with that paintbrush. So let's dive right in. First, let's dive into the different parts of a paintbrush. So first off, you have your handle, the ferrule, and the bristles. The bristle section may also be referred to as the belly of the paintbrush because this is the area that is going to be absorbing the liquid and what you're going to be painting with. Let these four paintbrushes just serve as a visual representation because there are four major types of paintbrush options when it comes to the type of bristles that they're made out of. First off, you have synthetic paintbrushes that are made with a synthetic material that is a stiffer plasticky type material. It doesn't feel plasticky in the hand, but it is a thin synthetic paintbrush. And then you have synthetic paintbrushes that are actually made to mimic real animal fur. So they might be mimicked to create the same feeling and texture and absorption of say squirrel hair or Kalinsky hair. And then you have paintbrushes that are a mixture of synthetic and real animal fur. And then paintbrushes that are made with real animal hair fur. Not all brushes are equal when it comes to how their bristles behave. There are brushes that are soft and bendy like this. And then there are bristles like this synthetic here that are a lot stiffer and harder to move. It requires more force when pushing down to get them to bend. Paintbrushes come in a variety of shapes and sizes. The most common shape is the round or the pointed round. And then there are flats, filberts, angle, dagger, mop brushes, liners, fans, and even specialty brushes like say this one right here, which is called a grainer. What I'm gonna do is grab a couple from each shape and size that I have, and we are going to swatch them out to see what they're capable of doing. So let's get right into it. The first paintbrush I want to swatch out and show you guys is the round paintbrush. Rounds can also come in the option of something that's called a pointed round. You can see that you get a nice line from it for when you go for your basic sideways. You can also go flat like this to get a little bit of a larger spanning space as well as if you hold your paintbrush a little bit more angled up, you can get finer lines depending on the size of your paintbrush. Because a round paintbrush is a very versatile shape, you can do a lot of things with it. You can do ups and downs with it. You can kind of go back and create shapes with it. So with your brushes, just play around with the way you move your hand. How do you create shapes, lines? How do you fill out areas? And can you create things like this? You know, like brushing them up and down. For reference sake, I'm gonna show you what it's like to use a larger round brush. I find it's good to have on hand more than one size when it comes to a paintbrush shape. So if you're gonna do a large area and you want it to cover it more, having a larger paintbrush will allow you to do that. Now, dependent on the manufacturer and whether or not the round brush is a pointed round or not, some of them will have a finer tip even if they are a larger brush. Now let's take a look at a flat brush. Manufacturers may also call their flat brushes a chiseled end, a stroke, or a wash brush. In the end, they'll all have the same overall shape. I'm not sure if that would be in focus because of the way I was holding my hand, but as you can see with flat brushes, you can get a flat edged that's really um, uniformed in shape. You can get a thin line here, 
but also you can angle your paintbrush and do little things like I can move it and angle it and do different shapes and maybe like do something like this. You know, so you have capabilities with that. Again, just for reference sake, a larger flat brush is capable of doing a larger space. So it'll be easier for doing large washes. Moving on to the filbert size. Doesn't look like I had enough watercolor on that. There we go. A little bit more liquid there. As you can see, I have the uniform shape like I would with the flat, but because it has the rounded end, um, my shapes are gonna be a little different when I actually go in to do, say, petals or things like that. If I wanted to paint a flower, they're gonna be more rounded. But let's go back to the fine, how small of a fine line I can get. Personally, I really love using filberts for flowers and petals because of the fact that it already has that round end, making it a little bit easier and quicker to play around in making my flowers and floral shapes. Next up is your angle brush. One thing I wanna note, as you can see here, is that I am running out of liquid, but that has nothing to do with the shape itself and everything to do with the type of bristles that this paintbrush is made with. This is a synthetic material and it's not as absorbent. So for example, this one right here, it's from Princeton, and I don't wanna to go too much into details of different manufacturers, but this synthetic paintbrush is made to replicate squirrel hair. So it's gonna be more absorbent. And you could see when I was doing the round paintbrush that the first one was very, um, juicy. There was a lot of watercolor liquid there and I was capable of going across the page for the full amount. And when you're painting with your paintbrushes, don't just think of one way to use it. You can hold it at a different angle if you like. You know, move your paintbrush around. Angle brushes can be kind of fun for when you're doing like certain type of leaves and floral shapes, just cause you can get that stem along with the shape of the, the leaf. The next brush I wanna show you is called a dagger brush. I find it to be very similar to an angle brush in shape build, but a little different. As you can see, this is a steeper cut line here and most of them have sort of a curved way to it being cut versus a straight line across. This is my favorite shape brush for doing greenery. So let's just brush it out. And as you can see with a dagger brush, I can get three different shapes out of it as well. So I can get a really wide one, a medium one and a thin one. So I can do that whole um, petal part of something for a flower. Or I can do the stem of a leaf and then make the leaf itself. Next up are liner brushes. They can come in different lengths. Um, Based on the manufacturer, they may even call it something else than a liner, uh, but they are very thin and 
kind of like a round brush, but teeny tiny and with longer bristles. So these type of brushes are really good if you want to go and do extremely small details. So like little dots here and there or things like that. Because you can get really thin lines. In fact, I don't even know if you can see that on camera. The last ones I want to show you in this format of just swatching them out are some specialty brushes. There are things called fan brushes that expand out and they're really good for getting interesting details and textures. I use this one a lot primarily for flicking paint so it's not in the best condition anymore because I use it with my acrylics, my inks, my watercolors and yeah so I'm going to actually show it to you with this one here. It's a fan brush, same thing, it's just a smaller size and I want you to see what it's capable of. So you can get interesting shapes and lines because the bristles sometimes stick together and then they separate. And the next one is this grainer that I have. It's very similar to the fan brush where the bristles separate. So it's thinner up here and then thicker down here in the body of the bristle, kind of like in the belly section of it. But as you can see, I'm getting really fine lines that are uniformed in distance. Should I, I'm gonna move this closer. Really just see how they sort of, sometimes if there's a lot of liquid, it'll stick, but you can get some interesting lines. At this point, I now have a reference sheet within my sketchbook that I can always go back to and see if a paintbrush is gonna provide me with a certain shape that I'm looking for. At this stage in my creative journey, I'm already familiar with the shapes that I really like. I gravitate towards my flats, my filberts, and my dagger brushes. And I will use round brushes to do detail work as well as um, fans and grainers for doing some like fancy splash work and some little bit of like, abstracty lines here and there. Let's take this more clinical approach and put it in a more practical, real life situation. I'm gonna paint a couple of flowers and show you just some differences between the paintbrushes and how they create their shapes. When you get to this stage of today's exploration of paintbrushes, you don't have to do anything fancy because I definitely am not gonna be doing that. I'm just gonna do a basic five, six petal flower. So I'm gonna start off with my round and kind of like just make a shape. Now I'm gonna do that in the flat. Filbert. I'm also gonna make one with my digger, even though I prefer these for greenery. As you can see, no matter which paintbrush shape you go with, you can still create some really interesting floral shapes for your petals. In the end, it's gonna come down to what you personally prefer to use and how you prefer to use it. My favorite and all-time brush really is a flat brush. I like the shapes I can use, the options that I have. Uh, sometimes I feel uncomfortable using a round brush because I have to go in and move my brush a little more where I like with the flat brush. I really just have to make one or two strokes to make a petal. 
One last note before we end today's challenge, and that is to discuss the oval washes. I didn't swatch them out in our exploration of the different shapes and sizes because oval washes can come in a multiple sizes. This one here is in what's called like a cat's tongue, and this one is more like a filbert size. Oval washes are to help you create a more smooth, larger area that's painted, like I did here with the large flat brush. It can do a big space in little amount of brush strokes. At the end of today's exploration, you're going to end up with a better understanding of the brushes that you have, a better feel for how they move and the kind of shapes that you can make as well as see how you could go about using maybe some of those shapes that you haven't touched but maybe got in a painting set or any of those kits that you can purchase as a bundle. I also hope that you really enjoyed day two of our five day getting to know your watercolor art supplies challenge. And tomorrow, what we're going to be doing is exploring using different things that you might find around your house or in the art supply store to create different marks in your painting. So we're going to be exploring mark making. And one of the items that I'm actually going to be looking at is a palette knife and some dried flowers. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow. So I suggest that you explore your house and look at different things that you have lying around that could potentially be used for creating in your adventures. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And until next time, stay magical.